How does a consumer decide how much to spend on a good and how to allocate her resources across different goods or different choices? Well, even before we try and set up this model, we understand that consumer has certain choices. So those choices would be would determine the consumer's decision and so would the budget or the income and prices of the two goods. There are constraints that the household or a consumer faces, which is a function of income and prices. And that is going to place limits on how much the household or the consumer can spend. So the constraint is really that the expenditure has to be less than or equal to the income. So let's assume that the consumer spends all the income on the goods. There is no saving here. And consider two goods, Bob, this is the drink, movies. What variables do we need? The price of the drink, quantity that is purchased, price of a movie, and the amount of movies that this person watches. Now, we already know that the income is Y. What about the expenditure? Well, if Lisa buys, let's say, three bottles of drinks, and the price of each is $2, uh, she's spending $5 on the drink. So this is the quantity and this is the price. Let's put that down. This is the expenditure on the drink and this is the expenditure on movies. Now we want to draw this equation on the y-axis, let's measure the amount of the drink. On the x-axis, let's measure the amount of movies. Income, $40. Price of movies is 8 and the price of the drink is four. Let's assume Lisa spends all her money on movies, okay? How many movies can she buy then? All the income spent on movies, eight dollars. Yeah? What about drinks? Well, she has forty dollars. Each drink costs her four dollars. Income divided by the price, ten. Given these two points, we can now draw the budget constraint. Uh, it should be a straight line. So let's see how much money Lisa spends at point E. Okay. At point E, she is buying two drinks and the price of the drink is four, eight dollars. Going to four movies up here, yeah. Price of the movies is eight, 32, and we get $40, yeah. So at this point E, she's spent all her money, $40, on the two goods. Right? So this is the budget constraint. What does that mean? Well, Lisa can afford all the goods that lie on the budget constraint or inside the budget constraint. And everything that lies outside this budget line is unaffordable. Yeah. So these are relative prices, relative price of movies. How do we define real income? That's your nominal income. What does that mean? Well, it's in dollar terms, it's $40. Suppose your income was doubled, so now you get $80. But what if the price of the movies and the price of the pop was also doubled? In that case, there is no change in the budget constraint. Think about it this way. How much does your income increase? And compare that with how much the price of the other goods are increasing. So this is real income in terms of price of pop. And this is real income in terms of movies. Okay, so that's our real income. An equation for the budget line. Let's write that down as well. Yeah. Now, the equation for this budget line. So in the y-axis, what do we have, Bob? Yeah. As a function of the quantity of movies. Okay. So we want to have an equation like a minus bx to define our line here. Okay. So let's do that. We need to have quantity of pop on one side. So let's start moving things around. Let's subtract this expenditure on movies from both sides. So we have and divide both sides by the price of pop. So the quantity of that you purchase of the drink, the constant here is the income divided by price of pop minus the relative price into how much you purchase of the movies. Yeah. So this is 
the equation of the line that we have just drawn. And so we can check this as well. What if the quantity of movies is zero? Well, then this thing is zero and the amount that you, the number of bottles that you buy off Bob is income divided by the price, which is 40 divided by four and we have 10. Yeah? So that seems to work. So this is now the equation that we have for our budget constraint. And what we realize is that why, if you were to write this in terms of an equation of a straight line, what we have here is we have quantity of pop is equal to the constant A yeah, minus B X, and which in this case is movies. So what is the intercept here a which is income upon price of pop yeah and what is the slope y upon price of pop and what is the slope guys the slope is pm over pp yeah so the slope of this budget constraint that we have drawn just now the slope of this line which is a graph between price of pop over sorry the quantity of pop and movies the slope of this line is what price of movies over price of pop it is not price of pop over price of movies even though we are measuring quantity of pop on this side it is price of movies over price of pop we uh, use the income and we said if you spend all your income on pop what would it be so this point a is y upon price of pop. What about this point here? Well, this was income divided by price of movies. How do you measure the slope? Rise over run. What is the rise up here? It is income over price of pop. What is the run? It is income over price of movies. So slope is this divided by, yeah, and that can be written as change the division into multiplication, flip these guys, income, income cancels out. Oh, by the way, guys, this is negative. What is the slope? It is minus price of movies over price of pop. That is the slope of this line. Yeah.